Since you clicked on this video, you've probably wondered what makes a face truly beautiful. Sometimes you can easily tell why someone is pretty, but many times explaining why someone is beautiful is like trying to explain a color to a blind person. You just know that red is red and blue is blue. The same way you just know when someone is really beautiful, or maybe not so much. People like to say that beauty is subjective, and that is partly true, but there are actually a few very strong objective indicators of what makes a face beautiful, which has been discovered in scientific research. So take a look at these two examples. Which one is more beautiful? You picked this one, didn't you? Why? Well, science. But it's not only that. We can divide beauty into a few different factors. We have the scientific beauty, but we also have harmony, which is actually partly linked to the scientific beauty, and we also have the facial uniqueness or charm. So let's first delve into the scientific facial attractiveness. According to experts, it comes down to some fundamental elements. These include facial averageness, or how typical your features are, the presence of distinct masculine or feminine traits, which is also called dimorphism. This include proportions, facial development, or what scientists call facial robusticity, and of course, symmetry. So let's go a bit deeper into what these really mean and how they shape our perception of beauty. The first one is averageness. Averageness is actually how closely your face resembles a mixture of all faces in a given population. It's all about how closely your face mirrors a blend of features from the people around you. Think of it as nature's way of saying, you fit right in. And basically, and quite interestingly, having an average face, not in terms of attractiveness, but in terms of features, is something that the scientific literature has been shown is a very positive indicator of attractiveness. And not only that, average faces are generally more symmetrical, and symmetry is typically attractive in all faces. And both of these traits independently positively influence attractiveness judgments, as the studies show. However, I also want to say that the prettiest faces usually have one or two distinct traits, which means that this preference for average faces is not absolute in any way. Okay, so this next thing is one of the big ones. There is considerable evidence that if you're a female, feminine female faces is what's considered the most beautiful. So what makes a feminine female face? Back in 1986, researcher Michael Cunningham conducted a groundbreaking study to uncover what makes a face beautiful when it comes to women. His work is titled Measuring the Physical and Physical Attractiveness, and it explored how specific facial features influence perceptions of beauty. And what's the key takeaway? Well, youthful, or as scientists call them, neotenous features like large eyes, small noses, and larger foreheads are strongly tied to female attractiveness. These traits are often more pronounced in women than men, which amplifies their appeal and highlights the difference between the genders, which makes them traits of the feminine female face. So, neotenous basically means features that are typically associated with youth or juvenility, but still are retained into adulthood. So it's not the youth itself, but the features that kind of gives a youthful look, if that makes sense. After the 1986 study, multiple other studies have indicated that feminine features increase the attractiveness of the female face, and it also does so across different cultures, which suggests that this is a biological thing more than just a cultural one. So if you have these features, you have a higher probability of being considered beautiful. But it's not that simple. It's not all about looking youthful, since mature traits like wide cheekbones also contribute to attractiveness, though a bit less strongly than the neotenous features. The balance of soft feminine traits with a subtle maturity creates a face that's both beautiful and commanding. So there's an intriguing twist. While youthful neotenous features are highly attractive, research also points to a link between more mature traits and beauty. So it seems that there's a delicate balance a subtle interplay between a youthful charm and mature elegance that shapes what we find appealing in a feminine face. Facialiness is another key factor. It enhances cheekbones, giving this mature look that's often seen as elegant and commanding. 
However, a balance is important, as too little facial fat can make someone look gaunt and less appealing. An approximate BMI of around 19.9 is rated as the most attractive for women, which is a lot higher than the BMIs of models. Leanness works best when paired with feminine traits like softness and symmetry, creating this balance of youthful and mature features, and this blend signals health, optimal age and reproductive fitness, which makes it universally attractive. So, this next thing that makes beauty is harmony. This is separated from the previous scientific beauty because it can't really be measured. Our brains subconsciously process hundreds of factors like averageness, proportions, dimorphism, which has developed over thousands of years of evolution. So harmony is basically how these play together. And while science can offer general insights such as recognizing ratios, traits, or averageness or symmetry, attractiveness is far too complex to measure with numbers or formulas. The true test of attractiveness or beauty is your immediate reaction. You don't need data or statistics to tell if someone is attractive, your intuition already knows. This is dependent on the facial harmony. And it's a skill that's shaped by thousands of years of evolution, as I said, and it's far too complex for any facial analysis to fully capture. And it's kind of beautiful when you think about it. Okay, so the last thing is facial individuality or charm. You know, those unique small imperfections that actually enhance a face's attractiveness. Because everyone has unique facial expressions, you know, while basic emotional expressions like happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, disgust, they are all universal and biologically ingrained, but how these emotions are expressed can vary significantly between individuals. And that is because the shape of our facial muscles and bones creates a unique canvas. Like how a smile might highlight one person's cheekbones but make someone else's eyes sparkle. And then there's culture influencing whether expressions are bold and lively or subtle and reserved. And personality plays a role too, with some faces lighting up like fireworks while others stay calm and understated. And even fleeting micro-expressions, you know, those quick subconscious flashes of emotions, they add a personal touch to the face. And these together will make your expressions as distinctive as your face itself. A genuine smile where both the lips and eyes engage is far more attractive than a fake smile where the eyes remain unchanged. Excessive Botox, which can limit facial movement, may make someone appear less genuine. Studies show that our expressions not only affect how attractive we appear, but also influence how others perceive us, whether we seem more trustworthy, confident, dominant or submissive. But that was all for this video, thanks for watching and bye!